Welcome back dear students. I hope you all are fine and doing well. Today our lecture is about the characteristic of an efficient or a good evaluation tool. As for now we have discussed the evaluation tools that are used in the field of the education. You know that the result of the evaluation is based on the data obtained from the evaluation tool. So to get the accurate result of the evaluation tool, a proper evaluation tool must be chosen. Uh, when while choosing the evaluation tool, some basic characteristics should be kept in mind reliability of the tool, validity of the tool, norms of the tool, objectivity of the tool and the usability of the tool. We will discuss all of these characteristics one by one. Let's start from the reliability. Reliability is a very important characteristic of a good evaluation tool and reliability refers to the consistency of the measurement which is how stable test score or other assessment uh, results are from one measurement to another measurement. Reliability is stated as a degree to which an assessment yields constant information about the talents, about the capabilities, about the achievements that are being measured. An evaluation tool is said to be reliable if it gives same outcome comes when it is administered each time. Exam for example, I test a, a class uh, for the concept of the measurement, how much they have understood the concept of the measurement and then another test take the, uh, them after a week's time, the score uh, that I expect from you people uh, should be same on the both the tests that uh, I have tested the first, tested the second time, which uh, indicates the reliability of my assessment. The reliability is important because assessment provides information about the learner's achievement, about the learner's progress. Many things lay their effect on the reliability, such as changes in the learner, in terms of the energy level, in terms of the motivation power of the learner, in terms of the emotional stability of the learner, in terms of the stress level of the learner, in terms of the physical environment, like the temperature of the classroom, noise, outside the classroom or no noise inside the classroom, distractions inside the classroom or like the administration of the test as test instructions uh, might be difficult to understand and many other uh, like the teachers, uh, how teacher responds to the questions in the test and the scoring bias may be there. Uh, the reliability refers to the degree to which the uh, test results are obtained that are free from the error measurements or the chance errors. Uh, the reliability is the degree of consistency between the two majors of the same thing as I have already told you in example I measured the understanding of the measurement term and in both the tests when I get the consistent results that means my test is having the reliability and there are some characteristics of the reliability our reliability refers to the degree to which a measuring tool yields the consistent results upon testing and retesting when we reuse that tool and and reliability refers to the results obtained with the measuring tool not it, it does not refer to the uh, tool itself it indicates the level to which the test is internally consistent means how accurately the test is measuring characteristic that we are expected to measure through that test reliability is necessary but it's not sufficient condition for the validity reliability is a statistical concept it's the internal consistency coefficient and the stability of the tool is the function of the length of the test there are some factors which affect the reliability of the test psychologists have identified two categories of the factors that affect the reliability of the test one they called as systematic errors and another they called as the unsystematic errors systematic errors are those factors that are related to the construction of the test and that they are intrinsic to the test unsystematic errors are those factors that arise uh, from the random issues related to the test the test administration or the evaluation of the test these are the external factors or we can say extrinsic to the test as they have nothing to do with the test itself. First of all, let's discuss the question construction or we can say the uh, test construction. Researchers construct the questions on psychological tests to bring about the responses on some psychological qualities or psychological traits. Reliability is negatively affected. If the tests are tough, 
if the tests are unclear if the tests are confusing while going through the questions one can interpret them in one's own way like i may interpret in my own way and you may interpret the te test item in your own way now it depends upon the thinking procedure of an individual these errors are the systematic errors they would be corrected uh, only by redesigning the test items if this error is present in the test then we have to redesign the test to minimize the uh, question construction error administration error it is the another uh, type of the systematic error the test instructions might contain some errors the errors may be either in the instructions provided by the test taker or one who has set uh, the test or um, by the psychologist who has did uh, the or constructed the test that is those instructions that are obstacles to gather the data accurately that affect the reliability also scoring error a reliable test has a accurate method of scoring as well as uh, the interpreting the results there are predetermined set up guidelines for scoring all the tests the test construction is not possible without the support of a research or the conclusions drawn from the research the results of the research have faults it may come under the systematic error next we have the length of the test it said that more the length of the test more the reliable test is next is the nature of the group if we uh, apply the test in on a group and the reliability comes out to be low then the group is homogeneous if the reliability is more that means the group is heterogeneous the speed of the test the reliability can be difficult when it is speed test we cannot estimate the reliability using any method because every learner is not able to complete all the items in the speed test it depends upon the speed of a learner someone has a good speed to uh, complete the test in the, the given time and someone lags behind so there is no method to estimate the reliability of the speed tests next the item difficulty there should not be too easy or too difficult items too easy or too difficult items fail to distinguish between the good and bad students uh, when there is minute inconsistency among the scores the reliability is maybe very low so if the test is easy that every learner can do it correctly uh, that affects the reliability and it, if the test is difficult that maximum learners do it incorrectly so that also affects the validity it said that the item difficulty should not be too high it should not be too low test taker factor the factor that are related to the test takers how much effect on the reliability the, uh, there are some factors like uh, the test taker may be anxious he may be uh, in ten some tension or he may have some mood swings or he may have less sleep or he may be feeling uh, ill the score is the combination of the real score that the test taker performance as well as the error score that is in built error of the test the error score makes it important for the other factors that are inversely affecting the reliability uh, of the test and next is the environmental factor this factor comes under the unsystematic errors this factor includes like disturbing sounds uh, like the room temperature or uh, difficulties or uh, there may be some personal uh, factors also the mistakes made by the psychologist showing a test some another form of the test of the environmental factors that affects the reliability as the psychologists are circled a persons in the psychological test human errors are always possible the scoring and the interpretation is uh, influenced by the attitude of the administrator Con concerning the test taker these are the factors major factors that affect the reliability of a test uh, apart from these factors there are some another factors uh, that affect the reliability of the test uh, like uh, the objectivity of the test or that may be uh, test retest interval uh, interval between the test retest should not be too long or it should it should not be too short there uh, may be variation with the testing situation faults in the situation of the testing may cause the score vary from uh, one situation to another situation the methods of the reliability or we can say there are the these are the types of the reliability 
when examining the reliability coefficient of the standardized tests it's very important to consider the methods used to obtain the reliability estimates the popular uh, association that's the american psychological association popularly known as apa has introduced several methods of estimating the reliability the methods are similar in all of them involve correlating the two sets of the scores obtained either from the same assessment procedure or from the equivalent forms of the same procedure the chief methods of the estimation of the reliability are though in these test retest reliability inter observable reliability parallel forms of the reliability split half reliability kundo richardson's reliability internal consistency let's discuss them one by one the coefficient of the reliability resulting from each of the method must be interpreted according to the types of the consistency being investigated the test retest reliability it to estimate the reliability by means of the test retest method the same assessment is being administered twice on the same group of the students with a given time interval between the two administrations the resulting assessment scores are correlated and this correlation coefficient provides a measure of the stability that is it indicates how stable the assessment results are over a period of time if the results show that the student who are who we are good at uh, position at the first administration and also they are uh, at good position in the second administration then the test is said to be the stable the close of the agreement between the two administrations of the test the greater is the reliability coefficient or the greater is the coefficient of the stability a uh, test retest or uh, reliability method is mainly used in the experimental research designs and also in the quasi experimental research designs there are some limitations of the test retest method like testing condition during the test retest may vary which result in the instability in the scores the individual's health emotional conditions mental health uh, motivational conditions or the mental set uh, don't remain same in the both administrations at the two different occasions if the test is repeated immediately the test taker may recall the first answers this may increase the score of the test taker besides the memory effect practiced and the confidence induced by the familiarity with the test will affect the scores uh, of the second test this is known as the carry over effect and this is also known as the transfer effect or we can say the memory effect the practice effect if the time gap between the two administrations is so long additional uh, learning or changes in the characteristics of an individual will affect the scores at the second administration and it may decline the reliability of the test a parallel form of the reliability it's also known as the equivalent form uh, form of reliability this method of reliability is also known as the comparable form of reliability the two parallel forms of the test can be constructed by selecting the sample in each form from the same content by the parallel form we mean that the form of the test are equivalent as far as the content as far as the ob objectives format difficulty level discrimination value of the items length of the test is concerned the test uh, parallel tests have equal score means variance equal inter uh, correlation among the items so the uh, two parallel forms of the test must be similar in all respects but there should not be the duplication of the items the equal form method of uh, estimating the reliability is widely used in standardizing the tests because for most standardized tests two or more forms are available when the two or more forms are virtually alike reliability is too high when they are not sufficiently alike reliability is too low and the pearson's method of correlation is used to calculate the coefficient of the correlation between the two sets of the scores obtained by determining the two forms of the tests it is the test which is used when one intends to use two forms as an alternative methods of the same thing there are some limitations of this parallel form construction of the test form is 
too difficult in comparison to the others, there is a chance of the memory effect, practice effect to operate at the administration of the second form. The testing condition while administering two forms may differ and the test taker may not be uh, in the same physical, mental, emotional state uh, at the both the time of the administration. Next is the split half reliability method. Reliability can be estimated or calculated from a single administration of the test. The test is administered to a group of the people and then it is divided into the half of the scores. The div uh, to divide the test into the half of the, that are equivalent. The procedure is to score the even numbers and the odd, num odd numbered items separately. This results two scores for every student which uh, when correlated gives a measure of internal consistency. This coefficient indicates the degree to which the consistent results are obtained from the two halves of this test and may be thought of as half length test reliability estimation. Split half method reliability uh, is estimated by a formula known as superman brown formula. In this formula, R subscript 1 1 is the reliability of the test, R uh, 1 1 divided by 2 2 is the correlation between the odd and the even items or we can say it's the reliability of the half of the tests. There are some limitations of the split half method also which are uh, the whole test can be divided into the two parts in a number of ways such as the reliability coefficient obtained through this method may vary from method to method when we divide the, uh, this test into the two parts. As the test is once administered, the factor chance error may affect the scores on two halves and thus tend to make the reliability coefficient too high. It's very difficult to, to divide the test into two halves in such a way that both halves have equivalent difficulty level and the discriminant power. This method cannot be used in the power tests. Next method to find out the reliability is the Kunder Richardson's method or the Kunder Richardson's formula. This reliability method was developed by the GF Kunder and M. N. Richardson. This is also known as the rational equivalence method of reliability. It is most useful for the homogeneous test reliability. Like the split half method, Kunder Richardson's method provides the internal consistency, but it does not require splitting the assessment in the half for the scoring purpose. This method enables us to calculate the internal correlation of the items of test and the correlation of the items with the whole test. All the items in the test are made to measure the same ability. The correlation between the items are equal that all the items of the same difficulty and that all the items are highly homogeneous. When we use Kunder Richardson's formula, it's required that all the items of the test should be psychologically homogeneous and every item in the test has a high correlation with every other item. This refers to the inter item consistency. The coefficient is called coefficient of the co rational equivalence. This coefficient provides some signal of how internally consistent or homogeneous the items of the test are. The Kunder Richardson's formula is here. R11 is the reliability of the test and is the number of the items. Sigma square is the total variance of the test. This is the summation and P is the proportion of the risk correct responses to each item and Q is the proportion of the incorrect or wrong response responses. There are some limitations of the Kunder Richardson's method also. The Kunder Richardson's formula is not suitable for the speed assessments. This formula indicates the consistency of the student response from one day to another day. It cannot be used 
for the power tests or the heterogeneous tests the different Kondo Richardson's formula results differ in reliability coefficient and in case of all the items of the test are not highly homogeneous this method will produce the low reliability coefficient next method is inter observer or the inter rater uh, reliability inter rater reliability method this method uh, assesses the reliability through the scoring or the evaluating done by the two or more independent judges for every test the various scores given by the judges are then compared to determine the consistency of the estimation the way the comparison is carried out is each rater assigns each test a score which would be on a scale uh, say for example 1 to 10 then the correlation between any two ratings are calculated there is another method of testing uh, inter rater reliability uh, in this method raters identify a category of each observation and then compute the percentage of the agreement among the raters like for example this is uh, an object and there are two observers observing this object and we compare the observation of both the observers or the rating given by both the observers in case the rating seems to be in the disagreement it would imply that either the rater uh, needs the training again or the scale is defective sometimes it so happens that various raters would have different opinions about the measurement resulting emerging from the same object such as scientific experiment or any test wherein the first test is carried out when the result is interpreted or recorded or presented at any of these stages the rater may become affected by the rater's bias that is the tendency to rate in the direction what the rater expects it's one of the best form of the reliability to measure an observation there are some limitations of this method also this method is tedious because the inter-rater reliability statistics needs to be calculated separately for every item and every pair of the raters it's lengthy process and difficult task to train the raters such that they are able to reach the uh, exact agreements even when they are trained the forced consciousness might render the ratings inaccurate and this would be a threat to the reliability of the uh, student's score next is the internal consistency reliability it's used to assess the consistency of major across the item within the test while estimating this internal consistency we often use the Cornbach's alpha there is a formula to estimate the internal consistency given by the Roulon this is the Roulon's formula here D designates the difference between the two halves of an examinee and this is the standard deviation or we can say variance and this is the variance of the total this is the variance of the two differences this gives the reliability of the total score not for the half score the Roulon's formula can be applied to the parallel form in which the coefficient would indicate reliability of the composed of the sum of the two forms this is all about the methods of the reliability or we can say the types of the reliability in the previous lecture we have already discussed the factors that affect the reliability I hope you have understood. I will be back with the new video lecture. Till then, stay healthy, stay motivated, stay tuned to the channel.